Good morning, YouTube. This is Matt and Eric and Kevin and everybody else here at the World Headquarters of Acme Aero in Charlotte, North Carolina. Wanted to kind of briefly give you an overview of what you get when you order a bunch of replacement from us. Um, obviously, this is not us installing it on an actual aircraft, but I uh, wanted to kind of show you what you get in your box, uh, how to assemble it, and it's pretty straightforward how to put on an airplane. We, uh, we intend on doing one, installing it on an actual airplane, but just wanted to uh, go through and let you know what you get in your box and how to briefly assemble it before you head out to your hangar and put it on. So, what you get is a, uh, is a box. This is our Gen 2 design. Uh, when you open your box, um, we, have, uh, we have in the box, we have uh, your, your left and your right, which are both serial numbered for your left and right. You have your extensions, you have your hind joints, and uh, you have your, your upper and your lower spacers, and we'll go over how to uh, install those. So, uh, you'll also have a warranty card in your box. Uh, you'll fill that warranty card out and get it back to us. Uh, that way we can keep track of uh, your serial numbers when you receive them, your tail number, your end number, um, and what aircraft they own and who they belong to. All right, so uh, once you take your shock out, um, what you want to do is establish whether you had sufficient clearance uh, in your cabane V. Uh, we've run into a lot of instances where the, uh, there's a lot of inconsistency in the mounting holes on the cabane V, so there may be an option where you have to run an eccentric bushing, uh, which we supply those as well, uh, which is really simple. You take the snap ring out, put a eccentric bushing in, put the snap ring back. That's on another YouTube video of ours, which you can check out on our YouTube channel. Uh, so if you get it and you find there's sufficient clearance, you'll inspect your parts, make sure everything you got is good. Very important, want to make sure that you have your, uh, your, your locking jam nut on your shaft. These two half nuts are, um, are, are systematic to the shock, so you don't worry about that. Just make sure this jam nut's on there. Um, this extension should be manufactured to your length of your specific airplane. Uh, this is a 5 8 18 thread. Now, with a 5 8 18 thread, you want to make sure you have at least nine threads of engagement. So, what I would suggest you want to do, if, if you're not able to run it all the way up, you need a little bit of adjustment. Make you a line, mark it here, mark it here, screw it on all the way. Make sure you, again, you have at least nine threads. Hand tighten it. Some of our uh, shafts have, uh, have grip notches for a 7H wrench. Some of them do not, depending on the specific manufacturer of airplane that you have and their request whether they want notches or not. Now, once you get this on there, good and tight, you grab your hind joint. Your hind joint has an aluminum nut. Now, this is a left-handed threaded hind joint. This is left-handed thread accessible. So, what you want to do, this is a half 20. So we want to maintain at least 10 threads of engagement uh, for a bare minimum uh, in your shaft. So once you get it all seated and get it, your thread started, you run it all the way down. Again, very important, you want to maintain 10 full revolutions of engagement. So there is some adjustability here. So once you once you get your desired length, you'll run your jam nut down. Now, once you get your specific length, left hand thread again, right hand thread again, you take a wrench and you counterclockwise and you tighten both those jam nuts uh, to, to your desired tightness, which is, you know, pretty freaking tight. Uh, there's really no torque spec, uh, but you can just, you know, if you've built an airplane or put an airplane together, you know how tight to make it. Uh, so, now that you've got your assembly together, uh, we have uh, reducer bushings uh, for some applications. Some applications is a through bushing. This bushing goes into this side, obviously. This bushing goes into the other side. That's ready now to go into your lower mounting location, okay? So then we'll focus on our upper mounting location, which you have two bushings here to take up the difference. So what you want to do is Put one on one side of the mono ball or eccentric bushing, one on the other, slide it in your cabane V, 
actually this is upside down, I'm gonna slide it in your conveying V, get it in your conveying V, run your bolt through, and tighten it, uh, tighten your bolt down to your specific uh, torque. And this is very, this is one thing that is very different with our application, uh, with a uh, bungee cord or any other type of uh, slip joint fitting, you wanna make sure it's loose so your, your bungee cord can move. This is a mono ball application. So we, we advise you that you torque it to your bolt specific torque because we want the mono ball to work. We don't want the bolt to be slipping inside of the mono ball. It's pre-pregnated, uh, both top and bottom, so it'll move freely. Uh, we want it to do its job. So again, very important that you torque the bolt to specific torque, whether it's 5 16 3 8 or a half inch. Um, and also, again, you want to make sure that your Schrader valve is pointing downwards. So it'll be on your airplane in, in this configuration here. Again, for, um, for accessibility to your nitrogen fill and also for clearance. A lot of times they won't, you know, they'll hit the, the airframe or the top of the conveyor belt. So make sure those are down. Uh, your, your Acme Aero Suspension System comes pre-filled uh, with nitrogen um, uh, and we average around 75 pounds depending on your specific build. Uh, give us a call if you want to play around with the, uh, with the air pressures. Again, this is an internally sprung uh, shock, so air pressure is only going to affect dampening. It is not going to affect uh, the static weight of the airplane or how it holds the airplane up or suspends the airplane. It only affects the dampening. A little bit of pressure plus or minus will change the dampening, but again, will not change the static weight of the airplane. So, uh, if you got any more questions, feel free to give me or Eric or anybody here a call. You can look us up on the website, www.agmiarofab.com. Give me or Eric a, a call if you have any more questions, and uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day.